Hi everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to look how one of our space images was created more recently that was posted on the blog. Now before we start, this is only a bit of fun, um, so I don't want anybody to take it too seriously. It's just a good way of getting yourself used to blending modes, blending styles, layers, and all the things that we use on a general day-to-day -day basis within Photoshop, but you're doing it all kind of in one tutorial. So I've got this picture of these clouds here, which I'm going to select with my rectangular marquee tool. Control C to copy. I'm going to paste it onto our star image, which is the stars JPEG, by pressing Control V. Now, if you're a Beck member, you will have access to all the files that we're using throughout this tutorial as a download next to the video if you're watching it via the website. Control T to transform. Now I'm going to rotate this round. I kind of want the brightest points of our nebula in this corner and it fading off towards the bottom end. So I'm going to stretch this image out and press your tab. Now I'm going to change this blending mode to screen, image adjustment, desaturate. Create a levels adjustment. And that'll be fine for so the next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. Change the blending mode to color dodge. Now I'm going to pick a color from the pink realm. I'm going to get a soft brush and I'm just going to Start to paint that in the corner there and the odd bit here and there. I'm going to move down to the purples. And into the blues. I'm basically going to start filling in the gaps here with the blues. Any areas you think are a little bit too strong you can feather in a little bit. Let's just change this opacity down a little bit. just mute that pink a little bit, a little bit too bright in places. And that will do us for now. So we've got our star background, we've got our cloud layer that we've set to screen, we've reduced the opacity on that as well, and we've put a levels adjustment on, just to try and get these white sections of the cloud picture through so it looks like it's a, a gaseous layer. And we've got our colour dodge which has got our colours on for the nebula. So in a, a few short steps we've got quite a long way really. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can add a planet to our picture. So for this I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to control D to deselect on that. Holding the shift key, I'm going to drag out a circle. I'm going to go to filter, distort, spherize. 100% and OK. Now we need to do this a couple of times, so it will appear right at the top of your list there, just to rerun it again, or you can press Control F. So we're going to do that another twice. Control C to copy that. Control V to paste it into our picture. I'm going to hit Control T to transform this. I'm going to hold the Shift key down to constrain the proportions, and I'm going to bring that in somewhere there. Press Return to accept that. So we need to add a little bit of realism to our planet, so on the layer, if you double click at the end, I'll bring up your layer style. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put an inner glow. I'm going to leave the blending mode to screen. I'm going to leave this colour, because um, it, it matches the texture that we're using anyway, so that's not a problem. I'm going to increase the size. Increase the choke ever so slightly. 
and reduce the opacity down until it looks like a natural highlight rather than too over the top so about that's fine now we're going to add a is outer glow and I'm going to increase the size of this to somewhere there we're going to take the opacity down so it's only just a, a very slight effect we don't want anything too over the top and click OK now I'm going to control click on this layer to make the selection active again and I'm going to create a new layer and on that new layer while my selection is still active I'm going to shift and F5 to bring up the fill dialog box and press return to fill with black now I'm going to filter blur Gaussian blur and this is going to be pretty high I'm going to move this up to create a, the darker side or the shadowy side of the planet so we want it um, to have a, a nice soft edge so around about 72 pixels is about right control D to deselect now I'm going to get the move tool select on our shadow layer I'm just going to drop this down to around about there and then I'm going to look at the opacity of that I'm just going to move that down a little bit I'm going to leave that there for the time being um, we will change this probably a little bit later on as we get a bit further in so we've got our stars, we've got our nebula we've got our planet, we've got a shadow on this side isn't perfect at the moment um, but we're getting there so with regards to this shadow if we actually zoom in you can see where it's uh, quite an obvious intrusion into the rest of the picture here so I want to try and smooth this out a little bit. It's not as blurry as I would like it to be. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna filter, blur, Gaussian blur again. And I think that's a little bit better. So we're gonna accept that as it is. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a, a layer mask to that. Foreground colour to black, brush tool, opacity 100%. Make sure you're selected on the layer mask. I'm just going to paint around the edge there to get rid of any slight effects that are left from that shadow. If you do go a little bit too far, like I did then, you can just press your X to swap colours and paint it back in again. And okay, I think that'll do for the for the sake of the demonstration. Um, obviously, when you do this, you can take a little bit more care, a bit more time over your selections and what you're doing. So, this in itself is is okay. We are getting there, um, but it could perhaps do with a little something extra. So, what we've got, we've got this selection here of rocks. So, I'm going to take our quick selection tool. make a selection, control C to copy, back to our picture, control V to paste, control T to transform. Now I'm just going to move this across so there's a slightly higher point here because that low point doesn't really sit very well with the picture. Um, and that will do us for now. So the next thing we'll do is I'm actually going to tidy up some of these layers so we don't get too confused about what we're doing. Um, so these layers here, drop them down to a folder. This is our planet. This is our nebula. Colour. our actual nebula and obviously the levels adjustments will attach to this uh, cloud layer here so I'm going to group those together we'll just call that gas cloud 
I'm going to rename this one Rocks. <coughs> now there's a couple of things with this. Where we've cut this out, there is a slight highlight to the outside because it was on quite a blue sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Rocks layer and go to Layer, Matting, Remove White Matte. That's just darken those edges down for us. It's got rid of that kind of white highlight off the side. Um, now the first thing that springs to mind is obviously these rocks don't really match the same colour as the picture. So what we'll do is we'll put a a level adjustment on there and a hue and saturation. Now I'm going to attach both of these to this rocks layer so they're not affecting the rest of the image. And on the levels, I'm going to bring the blacks quite a way in and the mid-tones quite a way in. And on the hue and saturation, we can play around to see something that, that perhaps fits a little better with the image. I, mean, I would say probably going towards the red end is probably a bit more in keeping. So but you can you know, can change this to your heart's content. We can always go back and change it afterwards if we feel it doesn't really look right. So I'm going to leave that at that for now. And I'm going to select these, drag them down to folder, call them rocks. For lots of you, this may be as far as your edit goes, and this is you're perfectly happy getting to this stage. You don't want to ask anything else. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this rocks layer off for the moment and I'm going to press shift control alt and E that's going to make me a flattened copy of the visible folders so it's not including this one so I've still got the option to turn this on and off if I want to and on this layer I'm going to go to filter render lens flare uh, the two are interesting is this one and this one the 50 to 300 first we're going to put that say around about 50, 55% something around about there and I'm going to put this one just on the top right hand side of the planet and click OK now we're going to go to filter render lens flare 105 now I'm going to put this one in this corner and I'm going to bring this one up a little bit to say about 90%. So we've got our stylized picture now, and we've still got the choice of whether we put our rocks in or put them out. Um, again, it's on its own levels. We can move this about, we can transform the shape of the rocks, make them taller, flatter, more green, whatever you want to do with them, you can do. But again, I'm just going to turn it off for the moment, and I'm just going to turn off this flare one for the moment as well. Because the other thing we can do on our planet we can select the folder control J to make a copy get the move tool and this planet I'm going to move up here somewhere control T to transform again I'm holding the shift key here to constrain the proportions I'm going to make this pretty big and I'm going to stick this up in this corner here to make it like there's another planet just off to the left there press return to accept that change now this planet copy I'm just going to rename this Planet Big and I'm going to open the folder up and inside here I'm going to click on the layer and I'm going to put a hue saturation level in there I'm just going to drag it down to wherever the actual planet use my Alt key to make sure it's only affecting that layer and now we can change the colour of that planet. So we'll perhaps bring that down to a, a more of a reddish hue. So I'm going to control J on the planet big folder. And I'm going to call this one planet small. I'm going to open this folder. First thing I'm going to do is go into the hue saturation. I'm going to make this one quite a dark planet. So we're uh, perhaps somewhere around the blue end. Close the folder back down, select the folder and drag that over. Control T to transform, hold the shift key again 
make sure we're keeping it nice and round. And I'm going to drop this one down quite small. And I'm going to put that one over there. Return to accept that. So we've now got three planets, we've added a bit more dynamism to there. And of course we've still got our rocks that you could or could not put in. Um, choice is yours. And again I'm going to control shift alt knee. This is going to create a flattened layer out of the visible layers that were on there. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go to filter, render, lens flare, the 105 at 90% of the top, filter, render, lens flare, 50 to 300, and I think we settled around about 50%, 55% uh, something like that, I can't remember. Let's click down here where we want it again, and click OK. Now if you're a back member you may have access to uh, the brush downloads. So what I'm going to do is take a brush tool and I'm going to select one of the flare brushes. Um, as I say, if you're a Beck member, these are on the download page so you can get these as well. I'm going to select something like that. I'm going to move the size of this down quite small. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to make sure our foreground colour is set to white. And some of these stars, I'm just going to go in, quite a small brush, and add the odd small flare. And keep changing the size of your brush, just make them quite small, you know, don't have to be too big and too obvious. But do keep changing the size of your brush as you go through. And I think we'll perhaps have a, a, little, a little bit bigger up there, a little bit smaller there. Just a couple of tiny ones, just here and there. If we scroll back out, if you don't like that effect, you don't have to keep it. Um, it's just an idea of something else you could add. Um, because it's on its own layer, you can turn it off. Or you could also reduce the opacity, so it's not quite as strong and not so much so in your face. Um, that's probably a, a better level for it to be at. Now, what I would probably do is, once you've decided what layers you do want included, what you don't want included, what you want to decide to to move out is you're going to have to make a levels adjustment right at the very top um, and the main area you're going to be looking at is these mid-tones so you're just going to drop these mid-tones down just to add a little bit of contrast and clarity to the whole image obviously you can go into all these planets and change the colors you can go into the layer styles and change how much glow is on each of the planets it's totally up to you how you progress through this um, but if you're a Beck member, the start images are all downloadable for you, as are the brush presets for the flare brushes. Um, download them, follow it through, and just have fun. This isn't supposed to be a serious exercise, it's just a bit of fun. And it's also a great way to learn how blending modes and layer styles work, and how they interact together. I hope you have fun with this. Until the next time, bye for now.